Shimad Bhagavatam Grantaraj Ki Jai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Janmad Yasya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Chate Suavigya Swarat. Janma Yasayatam Vayar Itaratas Chate Suavigya Swarat. Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yatsurayaha. Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yatsurayaha. Tejo Varimidam Yata Vimiya Vinimayo Yatrati Sargomesha. Tejo Varim Rida Jata Vini Majo Jatra Trisa Gumrasya Naswena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Dam Naswena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva O all pervading personality of Godhead O all pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause behind him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, <coughs> who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is eternally existent in the transcendental world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra. Dharma projita kaitravotra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam. Tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapu trayon mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva parir Ishwaraha. Kimva parir Ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avaruddhya tetra. Sadyo hridi avaruddhya tetra. Kriti bihi susu subhistakshana. Kriti bihi susu subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad the Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavad the Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such a truth uproots the threefold miseries. <coughs> this beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of what that scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataro galitam phalam. Nigama kalpataro galitam phalam. Sukamakad amrita drabya samyatam. Sukamakad amrita drabya samyatam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska bhuvi bhavukaha. Muhur ahoraska bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. 
Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectar and juice was already relishable for, for all. Although its nectar and juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrimvatam swakata Krishna. Shrimvatam swakata Krishna. Punya shravana kirtana. Punya shravana kirtana. Pridyantak stohi bhadrani. Pridyantak stohi bhadrani. Vidu noti suhit satam. Vidu noti suhit satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literature. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly from through Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. It's itself a righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadreesu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke. Bhagavati Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. This is what naturally develop is dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tamalo bhadayas chaye. Tamalo bhadayas chaye. Chaita etar anabhidam. Sitvam satve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the mode of passion, and, and thus material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangha Sijayate When these impurities are wiped away when these impurities are wiped away the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of god perfectly and understands the science of god perfectly vidyate hridaya grantis vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya chidyante sarvasam saya chidyante chashikarmani chidyante sarvasikarmani drishta eva Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, the Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, uh, the personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanta 1, chapter 17, verse number 14. Jnani Nagasyagam Yunjan Jnani Nagasyagam Yunjan Sarvatusya chamad bhayam. Sarvatusya chamad bhayam. Sadhu nam badrameva syad. Sadhu nam badrameva syad. Sadhu damane krite. Sadhu damane krite. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Whoever causes offenseless living beings to suffer must fear me anywhere and everywhere in the world. By curbing dishonest miscreants, one automatically benefits the offenseless. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Dishonest miscreants flourish because of cowardly and impotent executive heads of state. But when the executive heads are strong enough to curb all sorts of dishonest miscreants, 
in any part of the state. Certainly they cannot flourish. When the miscreants are punished in an exemplary manner, the automatically all good fortune follows. As said before, it is the prime duty of the king or the executive head to give protection to all respect, in all respects to the peaceful, offenseless citizens of the state. The devotees of the Lord are by nature peaceful and offenseless. And therefore, it is the prime duty of the state to arrange, to correct, to convert everyone to become a devotee of the Lord. The, thus, automatically, there will be peaceful, offenseless citizens. Then the only duty of the king will be to curb the dishonest miscreants. That will bring about peace and harmony all over human society. Srila Prabhupada so we see here that Prabhupada is advocating very proactive, very strong, very determined leaders of society. Not only the king, but the, the people that cooperate with this king have to believe in this type of strict adherence to certain eternal principles. So. Therefore, uh, severely or, no, ex uh, punishing miscreants in an exemplary way is important. So we see if you go in a country that practices Sharia law, like Saudi Arabia, if someone is caught stealing three times, they cut his hands off. If they continue after that, they probably cut his legs off also. But uh, they don't. They don't play games. They don't, it's not just one time. It's, it's three times. And uh, so that sort of makes sense because it'll be a lot harder to steal if you don't have any hands. Uh, however, if uh, two people engage in illicit activities, they always blame the woman and they severely punish the woman, sometimes they kill her. That, does, that seems to be much, much overstated. Why do we say that? Because in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, uh, Arjuna, what does he say? He says, Hmm. When irreligion is prominent in the family, O Krishna, the women of the family become polluted, and from the degradation of womanhood, O descendant of Rishni, come unwanted progeny. In the purport, Prabhupada says, Good population in human society is the basic principle for peace, prosperity, and spiritual progress in life. The Varnashrama religion's principles are so designed that the good population would prevail in society for the general spiritual progress of state and community. Such population depends on the chastity and faithfulness of its womanhood, as children are very prone to be misled. Women are similarly very prone to degradation. Therefore, both children and women require protection by the elder members of the family. By being engaged in various religious practices, women will not be misled into adultery. According to Chanakya Pandit, women are generally not very intelligent and therefore not trustworthy. So different family traditions of religious activities should always engage them and thus their chastity and devotion will give birth to a good population eligible for participating in the Varnashrama system. On the failure of such Varnashram dharma, naturally the women, women become free to act and mix with men, and thus adultery is, a, is indulged in at the risk of unwanted population. Irresponsible men also provoke adultery in society, and thus unwanted children flood the human race at the risk of war and pestilence. 
So here Prabhupada is speaking about two things. He's talking about, first of all, women being protected by the men in the family. That, that includes grandfather, father, husband, and so forth. And why? Because uh, children and women can be sometimes uh, mis uh, uh, can be misled and that will lead to all kinds of problems. So he's not just saying women are at fault. He's saying that irresponsible men uh, in the family uh, who, uh, by not properly protecting the women and then leaving them exposed to uh, other irresponsible men who have no uh, desire other than lust, uh, then women become contaminated or, or corrupted, and then unwanted children can be born, and, and so forth. So then again he says, the increase of unwanted population certainly causes hellish life both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. The ancestors as such, corrupt families fall down because the performances for offering them food and water are entirely stopped. So here we have the corruption going backwards and forwards. It goes backwards because uh, when the family members, the men and the women become corrupted. They don't perform the shrad ceremony and other ceremonies for the benefit of their ancestors. And they don't engage in following the Varnashram system for protection of the family members and for other people in the society. So we see how serious it is. So here it says, according to the rules and regulations of fruitive activities, there is a need to offer periodical food and water to the forefathers of the family. This offering is performed by worship of Vishnu because eating the remnants of food offered to Vishnu can deliver one from all kinds of sinful actions. Sometimes the forefathers may be suffering from various types of sinful reactions and sometimes some of them cannot even acquire a gross material body, in other words, they're, they're ghosts, and, be, and are forced to remain in subtle bodies as ghosts. Thus, when remnants of prasadam food are offered to the forefathers by descendants, the forefathers are released from ghostly or other kinds of miserable life. Such help rendered to forefathers is a family tradition, and those who are not in devotional life are required to perform such rituals. Now, why does it say those who are not uh, in devotional life are required to do this? Because a devotee every day is offering food, uh, food to Krishna and if he offers properly, Krishna offers it back as his mercy and uh, the devotee is, is Brahminical initiated and a genuine Vaishnava, then by them respecting the prasadam, the ancestors become purified. Just like if you uh, do your shred ceremony, you're supposed to invite a, uh, a genuine Brahmana or a Vaishnava to your house and offer them uh, food or prasad prasadam. So in this way, the devotee, who's a sincere devotee and strictly following, the fact that every day he's offering, he or she is offering food to the deities and then respecting it, uh, all and then uh, following all the rules and regulations, then all the ancestors are benefited by the actions of the devotee. However, if someone is, in, someone is not a devotee and they're engaged in some kinds of sinful activities every once in a while, then it's imperative for them to regularly perform the shrad ceremony. And, and that is, and the, and the food is offered to Vishnu or Krishna and then the remnants of prasadam are offered to the forefathers by descendants. The forefathers are released from ghostly or other kinds of miserable life. So these are all 
practices that were followed in previous times. Then Prabhupada says, simply by performing devotional service, one can deliver hundreds and thousands of forefathers from all kinds of misery. It is stated in the Bhagavatam 11.5.41. Devarsi Bhutatma Ninam Pitrinam Lakinkaru Nayam Rinin Charajan Sarvatmana Ya Saranam Saranyam Gato Mukundam Paritya Kartam. Any one who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, the giver of liberation, giving up all kinds of obligation, and has taken to the path in all seriousness, owes neither duties nor obligations to the demigods, sages, general living entities, family members, for uh, humankind or forefathers. Such obligations are automatically fulfilled by performance of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, genuine devotees don't have to do this, but people who are still engaged, as Prabhupada says, sometimes, hmm, he says, Such help, meaning offering prasadam, uh, to offer the Vishnu first to the, to the forefathers, such help in devotional service, oh no, he says, such help rendered to forefathers is a family tradition, and those who are not in devotional service are required to perform such rituals. One who is engaged in the devotional, uh, devotional life is not required to perform such actions. Simply by performing devotional service, one can deliver hundreds and thousands of forefathers from all kinds of misery. So this is, this is important information for us. We should never uh, in any way discourage others from performing these, ser uh, these services, these uh, rituals, because uh, it's necessary. They cannot help their, their ancestors because in any other way because they're engaged still in some kinds of s sinful activities. But for devotees it's not necessary because they're strictly following the pr principles of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so uh, it, then it says, by evil deeds of those who destroy the family tradition and thus give rise to unwanted children, all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated. So here Prabhupada says, community projects for the four orders of human society combined with family welfare activities. As they are set forth by the institution of Sanatan Dharma or Varnasram Dharma are designed to enable the human being to attain his ultimate salvation. Therefore, the breaking of the Sanatan Dharma tradition by irresponsible leaders of society brings about chaos in that society and consequently, People forget the aim of life, Vishnu. Such leaders are called blind, and persons who follow such leaders are sure to be led into chaos. So one such leader was Nehru. And actually in another sense, maybe not as much as Nehru, but Gandhi also. Uh, Gandhi did do things that were very uh, controversial. Some of those things were good, some of them were very bad. One of the bad things that he did uh, was he said that, uh, well, sometimes he would sleep with uh, a woman, even though it might have been his n niece. Uh, and uh, he would do this to prove that he was not agitated for sense gratification. But, and then, other times he would have his arm around women, even though they were maybe his own relatives. Uh, so, but he was dressed like a sadhu. But sadhus are not allowed to do things like that. You see, so he gave a bad example in that way. And uh, uh, so, the the British correctly d identified Gandhi. They said, amongst religionists, he's a politician. And amongst politicians, he's a religionist. So, in other words, he's a sadhu amongst the politicians, and he's 
like an ordinary guy amongst the sadhus because he did not, fo although he dressed like a sadhu, he did not follow all the rules. And, and that eventually leads to degradation uh, uh, and dest destroying the family tradition and, and so forth. Okay. Uh, and then Prabhupada, and then Krishna says, oh Krishna, oh no, Arjuna says, oh Krishna, maintainer of the people, I have heard by disciplic succession that those who destroy family traditions dwell always in hell. And Prabhupada writes, Arjuna bases his argument not on his own personal experience, but on what he has heard from the authorities. That is the way of receiving real knowledge. One cannot reach the real point of factual knowledge without being helped by the right person who is always established in that knowledge. There is a system in the Varnasram institution by which before death, one has to undergo the process of atonement for his sinful activities. One who is always engaged in sinful activities must utilize the process of atonement called prayaschita. Without doing so, one surely will be transferred to hellish planets to undergo miserable lives as a result of sinful activities. So this is to help those people who are, what you would say in English, recalcitrant. In other words, they uh, adamantly, or, or uh, uh, let's say, fanatically refuse to follow all the rules, although they follow some rules, but they refuse to follow all the rules. So such people are con committing sins, but they're given a chance to uh, reduce the load of those sins by the process of prayaschitta. Now, if you read the sixth canto, the beginning of the sixth canto, uh, Maharaj uh, uh, Maharaj Parikshit rejected the uh, process of prayaschitta. He said, "What good is it? I mean, they they okay, it diminishes their load of sins, but it doesn't stop their desire to sin." So therefore, he wanted to hear something better than simply prayaschitta. And what is better? He should become a devotee in full time, following all the rules and regulations. Then you're not committed. Then the desire for sin also goes away if you chant sincerely. But prayaschitta just permits people, and prayaschitta is practiced in Christianity, in Islam, in Buddhism, and Hinduism. It's not just Hinduism. Uh, the, the Christians have the same thing, the Muslims have the same thing, the Buddhists have the same thing, where they'll perform these rituals to reduce the load of sinful activities. But it doesn't stop a person from desiring to sin and sinning again. So the, the Catholic Church has the, the uh, uh, ceremony where you go in front of a priest in a, in a small box like... Uh, 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 setting and the priest is on one side you can't see the priest but he's there he can hear you and he can't see you and you have to make your confessions of sins that you committed so the person says father I have sinned and the priest said yes my dear son my dear daughter how have you sinned and then they go into a whole dis discussion of all the sins they committed the previous week or the previous month or the previous life or previous years. And then he said, well, you have to chant Hail Mary, Son of God, uh, Mother of God, uh, 10,000 times. That's if they've sinned they're really bad. And if it's not so bad, he said, well, you have to say it 100 times or 1,000 times, right? And then the person thanks the priest. And then they walk out and they see each other and and then the person gives a donation, they leave. If that doesn't purify the desire to sin. So the next week, the person can be back again. Oh, Father, I have sinned. Yes, my dear child, please tell me what you have done. <laughs> and they tell him again. And then uh, he says, well, you have to, this time you have to say Hail Mary, which is a prayer. Uh, just like we pray to Radharani, they pray to Mother Mary right, for forgiveness. So this is not a good system, but it's better than nothing. And it gives people a chance to purify themselves a little bit uh, from, their, uh, from their reactions. Okay, so 
this is one point in this uh, purport. So are there any questions? Mm. Okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Dang.